Animating text like this can be challenging, but it's not. There are only a couple of key main steps that you need to do inside of CapCut to get this super cool kinetic typography. All credit goes to Motion Nations on YouTube. Their link is gonna be in the description. If you have After Effects, they did an After Effects tutorial, but for all of us who are invested in CapCut, here we go, let's jump in. All right, so this is CapCut Desktop, create a new project. So I'm just gonna bring in a white JPEG and that's gonna kind of cover our whole background here. I'm gonna change my ratio to 16 by nine and just zoom in a bit on my white JPEG. Bring in your default text layer and I'm gonna say animating text because that is our first line. I like Visby extra bold and we're gonna change the color to black so that we can see it on our white background. And I'm gonna give it a couple of frames in the beginning and bring it in about halfway through that second. And the next thing we need to do is apply an animation for our first text layer. I'm gonna use something called bounce left. I think that really looks cool, kind of stylistic. And we can change the duration based on how long or short your voiceover is gonna be at the bottom here. The next thing we need to do is add our second text layer. We're gonna make this like. We're gonna disable our animation so we can see the text. And let's change the font to how we had it in the reference. Let's make it a bit bolder and change the color. I'm just gonna drop the size of it and position it in the top corner like this. Now what's cool about CapCut is there's stickers that you can use to draw emphasis on things. So if we scroll down to emphasis, you can see there's a bunch of arrows. I like this red arrow. It's got an animation to it. So I'm going to click the plus icon to add it to the track. And let's go ahead and change the curvature and resize it so it looks not too intrusive. We're starting to get the picture. I think we need a animation for like. So let's go to like and find one called boing. I really like that. And let's bring in our arrow a couple of frames after and apply an animation to our arrow, like bounce in. That looks really good. From here, it gets really fun. I'm gonna highlight all my text and drag them to the end of my timeline. This just gives us the ability to have a longer timeline. And let's do this and cut off this back end of our, of our text. The longer your voice note is or the more text you wanna use, the longer your timeline has to be. From here, I'm gonna highlight all my text and click Alt G and that's gonna create a compound clip. Now all of those clips are meshed into one. Shift the text over because like is now off to the side. So as like pops up, we can go to the first frame where it pops up and add two keyframes, one for scale and one for position. Use your arrows on your keyboard to toggle a couple of frames and add some more keyframes. From here, we can just drag that text slightly off to the side. And what you'll see is it's automatically animated that position. Make sure that these keyframes are smooth. So click on your compound clip and hold down Alt K. And now under your X axis, we can double click on that and that'll open up your keyframe panel. Go to your first keyframe on X and highlight it and then just add a auto curve on that keyframe. Go to the end, click on the keyframe and add an auto curve. This is gonna give us a much smoother motion than we had before. From here, it's time to add our next text layer. So I'm gonna go into my compound clip, highlight one of my text layers. I like the black text layer, so I'm gonna highlight that. Turn off my animation. And this is our next word, which is this. This is meant to be a word within the sequence that brings attention to the sequence as a whole. So I want its size to be much bigger. I'm gonna drag the text underneath just like this and we can animate that as well. So go to my animation and I really like the animation zoom in. The duration of this is a bit long, so I'm gonna drop it to 0.3 seconds. From here, I can highlight this and the compound clip that we just made. Click option G to make a new compound clip. You can see now our frame is relatively full in terms of how it looks for text, so we need to add some extra space. Go back and copy this. Go back to our main timeline and drop a new text layer onto our timeline. And our next word is can. I'm gonna bring can just up to where this animates so we keep that motion. And what we need to do now is create some more space. So I'm thinking for can, I want it to be just under this, something like that, but you can see we don't have enough space. And let me drag that size a bit smaller and drag it right there. Just before can comes in, we need to add a scale and a position keyframe. Use your arrow keys to drag a couple of frames ahead and add two more keyframes. On our last keyframe that we added, we can drag our whole timeline up just like that. And what that enables is for us to put can where it belongs. Let's see how that looks. I think this animation is a bit too long, so I'm gonna drag its time shorter. That looks really, really good. Go into these keyframes and smooth that motion. Because we're having change on X and Y, I'm gonna start with Y and double click. And you can see there's a linear line there on our first keyframe, make that an auto curve. And on our next keyframe, let's make that an auto curve. From here, we can double click on the X, 
make that an auto curve and let's make our next keyframe an auto curve as well. Now, the last thing I want to do is change the scale as well. So on my first keyframe, go to video and make sure that's 100. And then on my next keyframe, I want to just drop this slightly. Let's make that 80. Make those auto curves so it smooths that motion. Let's see how that looks. Looking great. We can go ahead and drop the keyframe animator and finesse can. So because we dropped in size, can can now be slightly closer. And let's see how that looks. And you know, it, highlight those text layers once you're happy with how that animation looks. Alt G to make that a compound clip. Now, with CapCut, there's a limit to how many compound clips you can make before it stops you making compound clips. I'm going to show you how you can get around this. Let's go into our compound clip and copy can, go back to our main timeline and paste that onto the timeline. For our next word, I want that word to be B and I want it to be the same size as this. You can see it's obviously much smaller, so we can go ahead and increase that size and let's just line it up like that. Again, we need more space in our timeline, so that means we're gonna need to animate those elements and that compound clip away. Go back to my animation. I'm gonna use typewriter and have those letters come in individually. I'm just gonna drop that so it comes in on the beat. Couple frames before B, we're gonna to go to our compound clip, add two keyframes in scale and position, drag halfway through that animation of B and let's position our whole timeline up just like that. And from here we can position B so that it's perfectly aligned. Let's see how that looks. There we go. I just changed my position slightly to align it closer to this and can. All right, let me show you exactly what I meant before. If I go to compound these clips and click option G or right click, it doesn't give me the option to create a compound clip. All right, that tells us we've reached the limit in terms of how many compound clips we can do. All I'm gonna do is highlight B and click V, set an endpoint by clicking I at the beginning of my timeline, go to the end of my timeline and click O. From here, I can export a 4K clip and we can call this phase one. Set your output destination and click export. That's gonna export that sequence that we just did as a video. And then we're gonna bring it back into CapCut. That's gonna be placed just above your solid and we can disable this compound clip which has all of that animation by clicking B. Let's go cancel on the right there and we can re-enable B by clicking V. All right, now we have, and it all should be perfectly aligned where we can play that sequence and we have it just as it was. Now we have all those elements compressed into one clip. Again, if we need to make any changes, we still have that compound clip, so we can go in there and make any changes and do another export if we need to. Let's go ahead and disable that. All right, so for B, I really like how that animates. Our next word is challenging. So what we're gonna do is click on B, click on the new video layer and click option G, and that's gonna compound all of those layers into one. Drag this compound clip that we're not using underneath our compound clip that we, we are using. And in fact, we can go into that compound clip, copy the word can and paste it on our timeline, change that to challenging. Animation, disable that animation. And I want this to be off to the left, just like this. You can see we don't have enough space. So what do we need to do is reapply an animation, zoom in, drop its time. And just before that animation starts, let's go to our video, go to position and scale and halfway through challenging animation, we're gonna drag that. Let's drag that over to the right and make it slightly smaller as well. And challenging is reposition it and let's see how that looks. All right, those keyframes are too wide apart, so I don't like how much time that is. Let's speed this up a bit by changing our animation duration to 0.2 seconds and dragging those keyframes up a little bit. All right, once you're happy with how that looks, go ahead and drag those layers, click Alt-G, and that creates our compound clip. Now, our next word is but, and but is another emphasis word. So let's go back into our timeline, copy challenging, paste it where we want to, drag that up a bit. And what I'm gonna do for this is I'm gonna change it to the color green that we had previously. And I want this to be huge, pretty much as big as our whole timeline, just like that. And I like, you see how the B has this line here and the T has that line. I want my previous word challenging to fit into that. Drag this up a bit so that challenging finishes its animation. I'm gonna add a keyframe just before butt comes in and drag it halfway through butt and we can add another keyframe. I'm gonna go to my video and position it. Let me just drag this a bit smaller. I'm gonna scale it way down so it can fit in there and you can see it's chopping out this. So we, what we need to do is drag it up so that we don't see that chop. All right, so we have the general animation of our previous words shrinking and having their position changed to the top, but you can see there's a bit too much overlap in how these words look. So I'm just gonna drag butt up slightly. And what that's gonna do is animate in 
once our words are up there. Now for but, I'm gonna change the animation duration as well. Now the final step, go to your keyframes and let's change that Y especially to make it some smooth motion. Click on your first keyframe, click auto curve. Let's go to our second keyframe and click auto curve as well. Now I don't think we have much of an X change, but we can add an auto curve to X as well. And the second keyframe, there we go. Now for scale, do the same thing. All right, we're almost done. Let's drag all that together. Click option G and make a compound. And now it's just the final two words, it's not. Go back into your compound. I'm gonna copy that text layer and paste it onto our timeline, change the color to black. And I don't want the size to be as big. Our next word is it's. You can see, I wanna put it right next to the B, but there's not enough space. So what do we need to do? We need to animate this. A couple keyframes before, go to video, scale and position. Toggle a couple keyframes afterwards, scale and position. And all I'm gonna do is drag this to the left so that it's can place right in the middle. All right, you can see here, we cannot make another compound clip. It's not letting us because we've reached that cap. What I'm gonna do then is just compound it's and animate it the same way that we do our previous text. So we need to shift it over a little bit more for it's not. So I'm gonna to go to my primary compound clip, go to video and animation, add a keyframe, go a couple frames ahead and add another keyframe. This is gonna make sure that our time here is still. And then once we reach our second keyframe, we're gonna go a couple frames ahead and add some more keyframes and then drag these over to the right some more. What we can do then is line up it's, the word it's and that compound clip with our other keyframes. So I'm gonna to go to my first one, add this keyframe, go back and click on this clip and line up our timeline to our second keyframe, go to video and add that second keyframe there as well. Now, if we just drag it's right over, what that's gonna do is it's gonna align the motion of our previous word with it's. From there, we can go back into the it's compound clip, copy that and let's add text layer and for our final word, we're just gonna add not. And we want it to show up just before. So let's go ahead and drag that right there. And you can see our position of not is slightly off. So I'm just gonna drag that over to the right. Last but not least, animate your keyframes and make them smooth. All right, one of the final steps from here, we're adding some extra flair. Go add an in point in the beginning of your timeline and an out point at the end of your timeline. And we can export the sequence and call it phase two. Let's go ahead and export that and line it up with the beginning, disable all our other clips. And on phase two, we're just gonna add some motion blur. And that's exactly how you do kinetic typography from CapCut. I hope you found this enjoyable and super informative, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.